Hi, good morning. I thought I'd do something a bit different um, today, is take you through how I come up with film ideas and the process. And I've got a cracker. And here's, hang on a minute. Here's Wiley. Wiley and I are really interested, she's off, in very low Earth orbits or V Leo. But my day always starts the same way. I head out to our garden and feed the sheep and the goats. And most important, to play with my new drone, the Hover Air X. Uh, so how do I actually um, start? Well, I actually like um, reading um, bits of paper, actually, and talking to people. And I've already talked to Tim Ventura and uh, my patrons about very low Earth orbits. So I often share with patrons an idea for a film and ask them uh, questions. Ooh, intriguing. So my question to my patrons today was, we normally think of spacecraft outside our atmosphere orbiting the Earth. Apart from atmospheric drag, what would stop an object orbiting our planet at rooftop? So I got the usual words of wisdom from my patrons. Um, air resistance? Yeah, that would stop it. Or a higher roof? Fantastic! I completely agree. Well, I don't really mean rooftop, but that is interesting. So, what is orbiting? It's actually free fall. It's actually going fast enough and having the gravity of Earth pulling you down so you're always going, whoa, round the Earth. As you're moving forward, you're falling, but the Earth is falling away. So given enough speed, you will orbit the Earth. But, so, that, <laughs> so, so that's the next question is, what speed do you have to go at to orbit the Earth, say, at rooftop compared with being Sputnik? or the International Space Station. Ha-ha! Oh, my patrons are so wonderful. Here's a fantastic letter from Tony Mish. Tony spent his career working at observatories and is currently archiving a fantastic collection of objects and images from Mount Wilson. This is what Tony smartly says. A body is in a stable orbit around another body when its forward velocity exactly counteracts the gravitational velocity towards the body, it is orbiting. Good, that's the definition of orbiting. So what speed would a rooftop satellite need to orbit at? Approximately 173,700 miles an hour. Uh, that's great, thanks Tony. But the question is why do very low Earth orbit. And the answer is intriguing and possibly brilliant. The advantage of being very close to the Earth is that the resolution of, say, an optical camera is far higher. For many years, the holy grail of commercial, I'm not talking about NRO spy satellites, but commercial satellites like Google, is about 10 centimeters per pixel. But imagine having a camera that could resolve one millimeter per pixel. That would be amazing. But the big disadvantage of very low Earth orbit satellites is, of course, a satellite decays very fast and would plummet back to Earth only after a few days. Well, that sometimes doesn't matter. Imagine you were a spy agency and you just needed a satellite to do very high resolution synthetic aperture radar or optical stuff for four days. How perfect is that? All you have to do is very cheaply boost the satellite into the atmosphere to a speed where it would orbit, continually slowing down by atmospheric drag, as my patrons say, but again, it doesn't matter. And at the end of, say, three or four days, it re-enters and burns up, destroying the evidence, or re-enters and lands perfectly. And that's exactly what the Soviet Union did back in the Cold War. 
they had very low Earth orbit satellites that would only be in orbit around the Earth for, say, 10 to 15 days, but they had controlled re-entry and they would land beautifully, boink, on Kazakhstan, where film, literally, was taken out and developed, and that was the resolution, the highest resolution images you could get at the day. But today, imagine a low Earth orbit spy satellite could send back real-time data for three or four days at incredible resolution, but it gets better. Oh, it's such fun researching this stuff for you. So there's a company who are looking at very low Earth orbit satellites because they're so cheap to launch. They also have a big advantage, they declutter space because they only last for a few weeks. But maybe there's a way of extending their orbit by using a very secret technology which is impossible to research on Google but definitely exists. And that is using plasma to make less atmospheric drag on aerofoils. I think the US Air Force have experimented with maybe the B-2 bomber having a plasma generator on its wing, and certainly the SR-71 had plasma tip, engine tip generators. These use a vast amount of electricity, but imagine a bomber with a big engine at the back can drive a generator that might even make megawatts of power. So the idea is not to have a blunt face in space, but make a bubble of plasma, and so you're actually flying inside this bubble. And that's what people are actually secretly working on. And both the European Space Agency and the Department of Defense through NASA are experimenting with these winged vehicles that can do very low Earth orbits for a few days. So you can just have something in orbit that can stay up there. Some of them actually have ion propulsion because there's so much sunlight, you can actually have solar panels and make an ion engine out the back just to keep it going to extend the mission for, say, a few months. But the big advantage is it's so much cheaper and it's so much nearer our planet that the resolution of the images or the data that you're sending back is higher and the data transfer rate is extremely high. So do you work in the satellite field? Do you know about very low Earth orbit satellites? If so, get in touch. My email address is in the About Me section of Professor Simon homepage on YouTube. Email me and we can do an interview. That would be great. So that's how I kind of work. That's the start of this research. It will lead to a film when I get enough information. I clear up some of the things that I probably said wrong. I get better data. Patrons and YouTube viewers contribute because that's what I say. The truth is out there because of you. So that's a bit of behind the scenes of how both my brain works and how I put films together for you. Of course, if you like this kind of thing, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, and thanks for watching. And the very best way to support me and my channel is to become a patron for you and I to make these films together.